Joffrey, Renly, Rob Stark, they're all thieves. They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. Ambrose awoke in the black of night, to loud aggressive knocks being banged upon the doors to his chambers. Ugh. Ambrose groaned and rolled to bury his head into his pillow, his head pounding and ears ringing. He didn't remember returning to his chambers last night, he'd drunk far too much wine the night before, during the great feast his father had held for all the lords and ladies of the realm. The last he could remember was him dancing upon a table, a flagon of red in one hand, a leg of mutton in the other, chanting to the bear and the maiden fair, a northern song Brandon and Edward had taught him, before his sister dragged him down in embarrassment, and that was it. Now he was waking up to some bastard banging upon his door at only the gods know what time. The door banged again, longer this time and louder. Your grace, a voice shouted from the other side. Ugh, just a moment, Ambrose rolled out of bed onto the ice cold floor. He pulled himself to his feet as naked as his name day. His lady wife Rennie wasn't here, neither was his daughter Violet. He grabbed for a pair of silk breeches, he managed to get one leg in before falling flat on his face. Ugh, seven hells. The door knocked again. Your Grace, it's me, Lawrence. Is everything okay? Lawrence? What did he want at this time of the night? A sudden thought of dread suddenly entered his mind. Shit. What did I do after Janny had taken me down off that table? His sister Janny was newly wed to Sir Lawrence Flake. Ambrose and Janny didn't have the most loving of sibling relationships. Ambrose prayed he hadn't done something embarrassing to his sister or brother-in-law that he couldn't remember. He stumbled back to his feet and struggled to get his other leg within his breeches. God, my throat is dry. It tastes like a Dornish man's boot. He grabbed for the flagon of wine on the side and took a long, deep gulp. He opened the door. Lawrence, sorry about that. I was, er, uh, in a deep sleep. What can I do for you, brother? The older big knight looked sorrowful and scared. He'd never seen such an expression on his face before. Lawrence, what's the matter? The big knight put his hand upon Ambrose's shoulder. My prince, it's your father, King Enger. He's dead. The flagon of wine shattered into a thousand, thousand small pieces as it hit the floor. Dornish red sprayed everywhere. Ambrose fell to his knees in shock and despair, struggling to catch his breath as the big knight wrapped his arms around him. That night, the bells of the Sept rang long and loud all throughout the night to inform the city and all its inhabitants of the king's passing. King Enger Sevenstar, first of his name, founder and king of the great kingdom of Andalia, the conqueror of the north, slayer of wolves, had died peacefully in his sleep at the age of nine and sixty. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Citadel with me, Grand Mace Stitch, where we return to Andalia. And the king is dead. King Enger of Andalia of House Seven Star, the first king of Andalia, passed away at the end of the last episode. Long live the king. And now we are playing as young King Ambrose, his oldest son and heir, who is a very, very different type of ruler whereas Enger was zealous this guy has sympathy for the old gods and different religions and different people he's going to be a very different ruler he still is a very impressive fighter he's a better fighter than what his father was and he's a great knight he's very very attractive as we found out at the end of the last episode he's kind he's a duelist and a hunter he's brave honorable erudite and chaste as well and he is obviously married to Queen Rennie of Andalia who is thought to be the maiden reborn but she's depressed at the minute so that's a little bit unfortunate but we are going to have a lot to sort out at the beginning of this episode as we prepare for the reign of a new king the second king of andalia it's still very early days in this realm obviously we've inherited everything from our father a fine set of armor we've inherited mother's mercy the valyrian steel sword of house seven star the great bow that our father had Enger's flagship as well as the crown jewels of House Seven Star and a couple of little books that our father had. So yeah, we've got a, we've got a lot to sort out as Ambrose starts to dictate his realm and get everything in order how he wants it. We've obviously got the bloodline of House Seven Star as well, founded by uh, Enger. And as we found out in the introduction, we are also there's a great threat from 
be on the wall as the wildlings are invading the Night's Watch. The North has gone to its aid, but we're not sure what we're going to do yet. As obviously, to most of our Andal settlers and our lords, um, the savages beyond the wall are no different to the savage Northmen. They're, they're both the same. We're probably better off letting them fight each other. We'll leave them to it for now, maybe. But we'll call a council and see what our lords think is the best thing that we should do but as you can see this king beyond the wall as we had a look in the last episode king mikon the hunter is very very impressive he's a great fighter but he's also a great diplomat more importantly than anything else so no wonder he has managed to band all of the all of the free folk to his cause and all the different tribes it'll be very interesting to see how he gets on he's got eleven thousand men apparently but i think he had the giants on his side as well so it'll be very interesting to see what happens there? I, I I kind of hope that they do take the Night's Watch, just because it'll be a bit different. Because it's very, well, in my own playthroughs anyway, it's very rare that I do see the Night's Watch actually fall to the Wildlings. So it would be interesting to see what happens. So yeah, as we said, we've got our king and thing out with uh, king and queen, and then we have one daughter so far, Princess Violet of Andalia, who has inherited our attractive trait from both parents. So. It was always going to happen more than likely, hasn't it? And then she's also gained the quick trait, which is awesome, which I believe her mother had, if I remember correctly. Yes, she did. So she's probably inherited that from her. But at least it gives us a decent heir. But hopefully we will get a son soon. So we'll leave that for now as it is. Hopefully we'll get some soon. We've got two wards. We've got Ellery Flake, who is our nephew between uh, Lawrence Flake and Janny of Andalia. Their oldest, uh, youngest son, Ellery Flake, who is strong. That's all he's got so far. We'll go with a struggle focus as we're raising him and we're very good in swordsmanship. Hopefully he will also inherit that great skill. And then our other ward is Owen Grayskark, who has green dreams. So very good intrigue and Marshall straight from the off. He's only two and that is the son of Brandon Greystark. But he's just Brandon for now. He's not Greystark, but he is going to be the founder of House Greystark once we get some land for him, which is probably going to upset a lot of the Andal settlers in our court, as he is obviously first man. But nobody other than King Ambrose in this story so far knows his true identity. So, yep, that is our two wards for now. And uh, we've got many more to sort out. Obviously, we have our sister, Roslyn, who is married to Lord Albert of the Warrior's Watch, which is formerly uh, Widow's Watch. She, he's still only got two daughters, so no sons yet for Lord Albert. But she's still young enough to maybe produce him a son. And then, obviously, we have who we spoke about a minute ago, Lawrence Flake and Janny of Andalia, who have one son, Ellery Flake, who's our ward. Then we have our younger brother, Prince Lionel of Andalia, who has a daughter, Freya Seven Star. Uh, I'm not sure how impressive. She's just got one learning so far. Still pretty young, though, so we don't know what she will develop like just yet. And then we have our youngest brother, Prince Owen of Andalia, who hasn't had a child yet. So it'll be interesting to see what he has as his child. And he's quick and a skilled fighter himself, so he's pretty impressive. And he's also erudite like us, so he also has sympathy and um, a good opinion of different religions and faiths, just like us. So it's interesting that our brother has turned out like that as well, considering how um, zealous Enger was. Two of his sons have turned out completely the opposite. We have two new custom characters for today's episode. We have Max Richards who is a great diplomat and a, fr uh, a friend to um, Ambrose. He's a grey missant, a genius, attractive, a socialiser, kind, honest, proud, content and lustful. And then we also have, there should be one more, who is a young knight from around the area of Sevensport who's just coming of age, just earned his knighthood. And ho he'll probably be looking for a place in Ambrose's bodyguard or personal Household guard, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oswin Steelheart, here we are. And he is a skilled fighter, a, um, a skilled commander, a formidable fighter, a knight, a duelist, diligent, proud, brave, content, cruel, ruthless, selfish, cynical, and deceitful. So, yeah, he seems like a bit of a Jamie Lannister type, really. Um, and he's got the Golden Knight on a black background as he sees himself as the Golden Knight type. We are going to need to arrange a marriage for the two new characters. Else, as we know, they will just die for no reason, as they like to do if you don't sort out marriages for them straight away. Okay, we've got this. She's a first man, though, so she might not do for him. Let's have a look on the fine characters and try. We'll search in our realm. For women who are unmarried 
who are our religion and see what we can find. Try and get one with some decent stats for him to marry. He's only 18, so we want someone around his age, if possible. Um, here's a 17 year old. Mm, ruthless, paranoid, content, craved. Well, she's not the best, is she? But. Oh, this one below. Yes, you will do. So we'll arrange a marriage between you and. Where are you, Oswin? Oswin Steelheart. Yes, send. And then we need to sort one out for Max. Let's go for another diplomat for Max, maybe. Hopefully, then their children will have great uh, diplomacy, which will help us out in the, in the future. Here we go. Amira. You look quite good. So if we arrange a marriage between you and Max is around your age. Oh no, Max is only 20. No, we'll try and find a slightly younger bride then as he's quite young himself still. Um, maybe one with decent learning. There's a 20 year old here. Yeah, let's go with her. She's got... Mm, she's not that impressive though, is she? Uh, I wanted to marry him to someone within our realm. If possible. Martial stewardship. Okay, here's one with decent stewardship. She'll do. Arrange a marriage between her and Max. It's just to make... Okay, so they're not willing to accept that marriage. Maybe... Let's try the 26-year-old. She's only a few years older. It, it could work between her and Max. There we go. Yeah, she's willing to do it. So there we go. That sorts out our new character's marriages. Now, we've got a lot to sort out with Ambrose. As I said, so we need a focus for Ambrose. Well, he's not very war-focused. I didn't really want to give him the war. Obviously, he's a great fighter, but... Looks like we are going to have to go with war. We could go with hunting, actually, which is a bit different. Adds health as well. Yeah, let's go with hunting. A bit different to going just with war all the time. And then for an ambition, what have we got? We can have five children, have a son, become exiled among men, and become a paragon of virtue. We'll just go with the simple have a son for now. We want to try and get ourselves our son and heir. We've got a hell of a lot of other stuff that we also need to sort out. Council is in discontent. We need to be crowned. A character rose as a favour. I'm not sure who that is, but let's sort out our council. Hand of the King, Rogar. I may, I think I'll leave Rogar as our Hand of the King for now. He's obviously getting very old. 67 now, old Rogar. And he was our father's Hand of the King. So we'll leave, we'll leave him as Hand of the King for now. Master of Laws. We will go. We could go with our wife, who's very impressive, but that could stop her from producing air so i think we'll go with max he's got the best diplomacy so we'll go with him for now and then we'll get him fabricating some claims soon master at arms will get edric back in control of that who was uh who took over from stefan roseheart uh, edric firehand is a great man with that 27 marshal i want to try and get him some lands as well at some point as he's been in our court for quite some years now how old is he now 35 yes uh, a master at coin will be Estian Rack. He's the best by far, as you can see. So we'll definitely go with him. That is the son and heir of the Hornwood. Master of Whispers. I'm not sure who we've got for that. Dale, Lady of Little Sister, whoever she is. Elena. Wow, she's only 18. And she was Enger's ward, I think. So even though she's slightly less, I'm going to go for her because she's closer in age to Ambrose and she would have grew up around him. So we'll. We'll go for some of those friendships and said court physician. Now, I'm not sure who we'll go with for court physician because we did. Obviously, Perra Hornsby died a couple of episodes ago. Who was our who was our court physician for what, 50 years or so? So a great hole to fill. I'm not sure who Margella is. That's our court here. She does have very good learning. She's shrewd, a scholar, diligent, honorable. Temp she probably would be the best choice. Mastermind scholar. So we'll go with her. For our court position. And then Septon is obviously Roax, who is the new High Septon, the old High Septon being murdered. Right, let's get these doing bits and bobs. So we want you to improve holding in Andalia as we are uh, in seven support, as we are currently doing an upgrade there. Uh Max, we want you to fabricate a claim on. Now, did we want to go north or west? I think I'd rather go west. So let's try and get a claim on the Spearmouth and Barriton so we can get all those lovely flatlands and horses for our uh, army, get all that cavalry uh, in law, obviously. And then we'll train troops in Andalia for now. We'll collect taxes. Or should we oversee construct? No, we'll collect taxes in Andalia. Uh, I never know what to do with my Master of Whisperers when we're not really doing much. We'll just get you to serve court. And can you just perform charity, please, Septon Roax? Is most of our... I think everybody is converted, other than the Kranig men, who I wanted to leave as they are for now, because 
I don't think you'd be able to convert them so quickly, so I like to leave them. Designated region, I think we'll go with our brother Lionel, because until we have a son, he will be our heir. Our bodyguard, we've got Lawrence Flake and Edric Firehand. Yep, I'm pretty happy with both of those. We'll go with Owen, our brother, who's a great fighter. Who else have we got here? Oswin, yep, he can be one of our bodyguards, the new young knight. And Brandon would probably be the best. We're not going to go for the Eleanor. She's our court physician. Why would she be our bodyguard? But we'll go with Brandon Greystock as well, our close and best friend. And Lawrence Flake is the captain of the household guard. So, we yes, we'll leave him as a bodyguard and the captain of the bodyguard as well. We've got a Keeper of Swans, Master of Horse, Master of Hunt, uh, High Amina. So all these are Field Court Tutor. Who's got the best learning that's left? We could... Yeah, I think... Hmm. Brandon, that might not go down well if we choose Brandon. It might not go down well with all of our, um, what are they called, all our Andals. So we'll go with, they've both already got a job, so it'd be nice to go, no, we'll go with her anyway, because she's just got such good learning, to be fair. And now Commanders, we need some new Commanders. So Edward Hooton, the crippled boy, who is our best friend, he's obviously going to be in there. Lord Roland of Sweet Sister, you're going to get replaced by... Um, we might go, yeah, we'll go with Damien Shycross, the Valyrian. Now that anger has gone, he might get more favour at court now that the zealous racist Engor has disappeared. He obviously had a great, great hatred towards um, Valyrians and Thirst Men and anyone who wasn't Andal, basically, sees them as a superior race. Awesome, we've got very, a lot of Crown Loyalists and we need a High Admiral. Now, I'm not sure who the hell we should give that to. Um, da, da, who have we got on there? We could give it to Edward Hooton just because he's our close friend and it'd be nice to have him on our council. So that is our council sorted. We have Rogar of the Hornwood uh, as Hand of the King, uh, Lord Colmer of Old Castle as an advisor, Master of Laws is Max Richards, Master at Arms, Edric Firehand, Master of Coin, Estian Rack, the heir to the Old Hornwood. Elena Bohr as our Master of Whisperers, Court Physician is Magella Stakely, and Septon Roex as our Septon, and then Edward Hooton as our Master of Ships. So at least that's all our council now sorted out. So I believe now we can probably unpause and start... Oh, we need to set our crown focus. We'll do that in Seven's Port. Council's in discontent over a few things, so we'll leave that for now. Uh, we need to crown ourselves, but there's more important... Some important things first to probably sort out. What else is there that we can do? We've got a lot of money that our father left us. Obviously, we built up a bit of a great... Um, we built up a great amount of wealth to leave for him, so it was in a good position. We wanted to keep the... Uh, keep the... Uh, la, 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 la. Keep the realm not in debt and in a very healthy position, Redda. We've got some plots. I don't think there's anything against us. No, threats... Any dangerous factions, only liege loyalists, which is good. And we've got a lot of people in that, which is great. So we've not got to really worry about that, at least. I think it's time, though, for the first council meeting of the new council. Brandon glided his hands along the council table reverently. The table was made of weirwood, pale white, yet still spotted with red sap which spread across the table like dark red veins. The sight made him both angry and sad, but now wasn't the time to think about that, however. He had never imagined he would end up in this position. He ran to Andalia, a landless bastard, and now he was advisor to a king. It felt so surreal to him. Well, you're here early, a voice came from the council chamber's doorway. Brandon looked up to see his friend Edward. He wheeled himself into the room with the new wheelchair Brandon and Ambrose had gifted him for his name day. Well, it's our first council meeting. I didn't want to be late, Brandon replied, a sad smile upon his face. Edward wheeled his chair into an empty space at the table to Brandon's right, chuckling. How long have you been here? Brandon shifted awkwardly in his chair, which suddenly seemed much too big for him. A half hour? Maybe more? Edward chortled at him. As soon as he did so, a young red-haired man walked in. Estian racked the air to the hornwood. He smiled. Brandon, Edward, good to see you. Brandon smiled at the other friend. It's good to see you too, Estian. How is your lady wife, Elena? Estian blushed like a young squire. She's quite the woman. She's incredible. Anything I could ask for. 
before he could continue on a valerian man enters ah so you are our king's group of companions the old man chuckled flicking long silver hair from his eyes dark plum eyes brandon rises from his seat and nods at the man yes we are his grace's childhood friends lord damien i presume it is an honor of course you know lord rack here and this is lord hooton to my right and brandon paused to swallow a knot that had suddenly formed in his throat and i am lord greystark it still sounded so foreign to him greystark it hadn't been a week since King Anger had passed when Ambrose had called him to his solar and given him his own house and titles. He promised lands would soon follow. Damien smiled slightly. Ah yes, I've heard of you. Estian wouldn't keep quiet about you during our journey. Estian smiled embarrassed and flushed red once more. Edward raised an eyebrow. Oh, and what did Estian say about Bran? Damien chuckled. He said that you were the one to get Lord and Lady Rack interested in religious matters. He is about to say more when the mistress of whispers enters the hall, a young woman no more than twenty. Like many of the other council members, Brandon didn't know much about Lady Elena Bore, though he knew if she was the new master of whispers she must have eyes and ears all over the realm of Andalia. Suddenly Sir Edric Firehand appeared. He stopped as he entered the door. He looked from left to right at the new council members, whilst raising an eyebrow, smirking at the young northerners, before glaring at the Valyrian Damien. He made his way to the end of the table more like a soldier's march than a walk, to sit himself in the chair directly opposite to where the new king would be placed. He then began to drum his burnt fingers upon the solid weirwood table, all the time never taking his eyes off Damien, the burnt side of his face occasionally twitching. Brandon clears his throat. You are Lord Firehand, I presume? Sir Firehand. I'm a knight, not a lord. Maybe one day, though, if my king sees my service worth the honor. Edward interjects. Do you still feel it? Those scars? He raised a hand to point to his face, his eyes flickering playfully. I'm sure I feel it more than you do your legs, boy. Edric spat back at once, a smirk on his face. Edward pats his wheelchair. Who needs legs when his grace has given me wheels? Damien let out yet another chuckle. I like you, boy. He pats Edward's back and pours him some red. Edric's smirk grows into a grin. He lets out a small yet coarse laugh as he reaches for a flagon of ale. Suddenly, Ambrose enters the room, followed by his brother Lionel, his personal guard Sir Lawrence Flake, and the newly appointed Master of Laws Max Richards. The Lords suddenly remember their adults and stop their bantering and snide remarks. Brandon stands again and pulls out the chair in between him and Edward while bowing his head. Your Grace, he says respectfully. Ambrose smiles at him and walks over to his chair. He tussles Edward's hair playfully on the way. Then, standing in the doorway to the chambers, looms the hand of the king with a very serious look on his face. Estian bows respectfully. Your Highness, my Lord Father. Rogar raises an eyebrow at his son. I raised him, Estian. We've met before. Then, Lord Rack walks in slowly and takes his first available seat and lowers himself slowly into it. Damien pats his brother-in-law's back as the boy meekly sits down, embarrassed. You tried, he chuckled. Brandon had noticed the silver man seemed to do that a lot. My Lords... Thank you all for gathering today at my request for the first council meeting of my reign, Ambrose said, seeming slightly nervous. I assume by now you've all been introduced. This is Lord Max Richards, a dear friend of mine who will be acting as Master of Laws. The handsome young man bowed and smiled at the doors before taking a seat. And this is Sir Lawrence Flake, Commander of the Seven Star Guard, and my brother through marriage. I'm sure many of you have heard of his feats upon the battlefield. My lords, the big knight nodded before also taking his seat. Finally, Ambrose took his seat. Brandon poured him some wine. Ambrose nervously took a long, deep gulp of the Dornish Red, set it down upon the table, and began. My lords, we have many pressing matters to discuss. Firstly, and most importantly, we must address and organise my father's funeral, and then decide what to do about this apparent northern threat. Lionel nods. May my lord father rest well. He is deserving of a good afterlife with the gods. He turns to his brother. I pray that you and I can share his strength. After many long hours of debating, most of the funeral is planned out. A great spectacle to rival even the late king's coronation. Most of the details had been handed over to Lord Estian as the master of coin. It would lay heavily on him to find the coin to pay for such an occasion. Thankfully, Enger had left the realm in a very healthy position, rich from trade and conquest. Estian also had to sort out where to house all the great lords and knights of the realm who were sure to attend and say farewell to their king. Damien sat up. Now then. As we say in Volantis, shall we discuss the elephant in the room? The man looked serious for the first time. Yes, my lords, what of this petty northern bother? Wildlings, is it? They sound a strange people, Ambrose said yawning and wiping his eyes with the back of his hand. Hours of drinking and arguing and debating had taken its toll on all present. 
If it's really as huge a threat as people say it is, I suggest we should ally ourselves with the Starks for now, said Edward, the first to speak, looking around the room seeing many faces which did not agree. Lionel scoffs, why should we? Let the heathens rip each other apart, I say, what concern is it of ours? The men and women of the north of the wall are not a people to be trifled with. With respect, Prince Lionel, we should take this incursion seriously, Brandon states. Pfft, you won't find me fighting alongside such savages, against yes, with no, Edric stated as he slammed his burnt hand down on the table. Damien glares at Firehand. The fire left your eyes intact, correct? The, well, how is it that you are so blind? The two glared at one another across the table as if either one might attack the other at any moment. Brandon stared into Lionel's eyes. Each of the past kings beyond the wall wished to see their people pass through into the north, and they've nearly succeeded on several occasions. However, it should also be taken into account why they wished to come south. Lionel glares. What would you know, bastard? If they've never succeeded before, then why should they now? I say we use this opportunity to attack the Starks and expand our borders once more. Ambrose stands shocked. I've heard enough for now, my lords. We will not be taking part in any way until after my father is buried. Then we will reassess the situation and see how it may best benefit Andalia. With that, the lords nod, stand and take their leave. Edric and Damien leave still bickering. Brandon nods with the other council members in agreement. He will have to speak with Ham about this. But after his father is laid to rest, a shiver runs down his spine, something that does not go unnoticed by Edward, who raises his eyebrow as if to ask if his friend is okay. His dream from last night flashes in his head. It was vague but what he remembers clearly were those eyes, ice blue eyes, the eyes of death. Okay, so the council is out of the way, so it's time to start getting other things sorted. So we will now, we can't organize, why can we not organize that? We uh, was not crowned after 30 years of rule. Uh, well, because we're currently at war, even though I don't want to be in that war, we got forced to join that war. Um, so we can't actually do that until we could send for a maester of the Citadel, but I think we'll create our own maester, guys. So if anyone wants to create a maester, please feel free. I'd uh, really appreciate that. It'd make a nice change from knights and uh, sneaks and snakes that we normally get. It'd be really nice to have a decent, well-learned maester. Uh, as a created character, so I'd love that if one of you guys could do that for me. We could do some other things though. We could search for a smith. Let's let's search for a smith and try and make something with uh, Ambrose. Obviously, we already have the crown jewels, which Enger uh, got forged. We already have a Valyrian steel sword, so we've already got armor though. We've already got a fine set of armor. Maybe we could get better than a fine set of armor though. So let's make a new set of armor. Why not? And is there anything else that we can do? Not really. We could convert to Andal Northman, which I think we will do with... Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to convert to the local courtier. So, Ambrose is an Andal Northman. Not an Andal, he's an Andal Northman, which that's nice to see. He was born here, so that is obviously what he's going to become. Okay, uh, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Prince Lionel and Kellis. So, Kellis Rack, the um, second, I think he's the second oldest son of House Rack. He has gone to Prince Lionel to be his ward, so that's a great pairing there. I believe he's more diplomacy, yep, so he should get on very well with Prince Lionel, who's great in diplomacy. He's the middle son of Enger, Ambrose's uh, second brother. Uh, I believe that we're sorting a lot more out. Your wisdom and mercy, Leisure. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Edric and Colmer. So, Colmore Bloom. Oh, wow. He's got very impressive traits. He's strong and quick. Very good uh, marshal. And he has gone to Edric Firehand. So, he's like the perfect person, really, isn't he, to go to with that amazing uh, marshal. Just right, he's only got a daughter. Hopefully, he has a son soon. So, that's one more wardship. And then, may you live in harmony and contentment. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Lady Dalla and Pyron. So, Lady Dalla of, of Little Sister has got Pyron Josso. That was for the intrigue, I believe. If she's good at intrigue, yep. Yeah. The invitation have been sent to the lords and ladies of the realm to come to the funeral. It is time to prepare the feast and the funeral itself, so the guests will arrive soon. Best get on with it. So we're going to have the great funeral of Enger Seven Star. What a great carriage. I think I'm really going to miss him. May live in harmony and contentment. I, I accept the suggestion that Oswin and Harry get married. Perfect. <clears throat> 
Also, don't forget that I've started a history and law side series to go alongside the Knights of the North so that you can learn more about the history and the background of all these awesome characters and the story. If you really enjoy this series, like a lot of you do, you can learn more about it and it just feels good, don't it, when you get more involved and you learn the lore. It'll make you enjoy the series more, so make sure that you check that out, guys. I'm starting with the life and reign of Enger Seven Star. The best part about preparing a feast is deciding what food stuff to serve. I must purchase venison, boar and duck. Spices, wine and ale, honey for the desserts, cheeses and perhaps even a swan or a peacock. I will spend lavishly on food. It's for the greatest... Well, it's for the founder of Andalia. We've got to honour him. Blessing upon you and your house. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Alinda and Narbert. So, Narbert Seven Star, who is our... He'll be our cousin, wouldn't... No, he wouldn't. He'd be our cousin's son. And, wow, he's pretty good. Strong. And he has gone to Alinda Salzard to be warded. Okay. But we're sorting out a lot of guardianships. Make sure that all the young and the next, it'll be the third generation of Andalia, are all well trained. Your wisdom and uh, mercy are legendary. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Edric and Stefan. So Edric Firehand is taking on your young Stefan Roseheart. And oh my god, he's four year old. <laughs> look at those traits for a four year old. Strong, giant and quick. Oh, and look at his name, Stefan Roseheart. Could this be the, the true the great Stefan Rosa, who obviously died a few episodes ago, the Tawny Knight. It could be him reborn. We could have a great second Stefan Rosa. And is, is he... Oh, he may not be the heir. No, no, four. So, yes, he is actually the heir to the White Star. So it would be awesome to have another Stefan Rosa there. Lesson up on you and your house. I accept the suggestion that Max and Amira get married. Awesome. Oh, that's something that I forgot to mention as well. Blessing upon you and your house. I, Lord Albert of Warriors Watch, accept your proposal for a non-aggression pact. Awesome. Well played, Albert. We don't want any rivalries like you had with Enger. But yeah, that's something that I did. Obviously, the main branch of uh, House Seven Star is a red star, as you can see. So what I've done now is for Maiden's Gate, which was given to our nephew, well, Enger's nephew, his sister's son, is now the blue star of House Seven Stars. So I've given them a different sigil, so it is a different branch of the house. So we've got the blue star of House Seven Star, and then for another branch, which was Engor's youngest brother, Owen, whose son is... He's just a, a landed knight. He has a castle around Sevensport, but they're known as the green stars of House Seven Star. So we have three different colours now. We did obviously have the black stars who died out, but so there's now three branches of house seven star the red star which is the main branch and then the lesser branches which is the blue stars of maiden's gate and then the landed knights who are the green stars of uh seven Spore. i can't remember what the castle was called we need to think of a name for that right let's unpause and see what's going to kick off in the north with the wildlings the knight's watch and the starks who are defending but it'd be interesting to see what happens we can't really see much of what's going on up here so let's actually build a spy network just above the night's watch so that we can see what's going on beyond the wall all the guests have arrived at seven Spore, and it's now time to start the feasting to celebrate the life of king enger seven star let the feasting commence wow the rivers and hills is still getting pretty big but rosbear which is owned by a close kin of this has started to retake land which is good because they literally collapsed completely obviously our granddad and uh, lennox married the queen of rosbear and they had all their land taken away but they look like they're making a bit of a comeback which is good as the silent sisters finish the preparations of the deceased the body of king engar is brought to the local set and laid atop the altar at its center canopic jars of ornate design are placed at the feet of the dead and the eldest child which would be ambrose places the death oh no it wouldn't be ambrose it'd be the oldest son so it would be oh what's her name I forgot her name. It's the one married to Albert, isn't it? Uh, Princess Roslyn. So it would have been Princess Roslyn. Eldest child places the death stones upon the closed eyes of the deceased. One by one, those closest to the departed in life make their way into the sept and speak their goodbyes, shed their mournful tears, and pray to the seven for the dead. As the day winds down, as the day winds down, and the last goodbye is said, the body is carried by kin along the crowned line streets to its final resting place as the sun fades away. A great feast is held, and those who knew the dead recount stories in the lives of the deed of the lost king. Anger is finally laid to rest. He had a great life. Gained forty piety for that. I'm guessing there would have been a hell of a lot of people present to um, say their goodbyes to King Anger. He obviously touched a lot of people and made a huge difference for people's lives 
Um, okay, there's a war going on in the Riverlands. I don't care about dragons. I wish they'd stop telling us. We've come here to get away from the blasted dragons. What's it like over in Valyria now, by the way? My master at arms, Edric Firehand, has told me about a remarkable uh, armorsmith uh, residing in Whitford. He suggested that I invite the man to my court to see his work for myself. If he manages to impress me, I could order my own custom-made item. A fine idea, Edric. Yeah, hopefully we can make our own armor. Okay, so it looks like most of the Andorlands have now collapsed, which is unsurprising. Wow, I don't have a clue what's going on in the Reach, but that looks a right shit heap. What is going on in the Reach? Are they still at war with Dawn? Invasion of the Reach. Alright, so yeah, Dawn are invading. Liberation Revolt. Uh, right, so an Andal Hope. They've got about four wars going on in the Reach, so that could be interesting if that gets divided. It'd be nice to see some more minor kingdoms like Andalia cropping up and then turning into great kingdoms like Andalia, just to have a different timeline. Once the Armorsmith's craftsmanship had been ch checked by my most knowledgeable attendants to ensure the quality was sufficient. I received him in the throne room. He introduced himself as Master Farlin and gestures towards his numerous assistants who all carried examples of his work. Does my king have anything special in mind? I am in need of protection. Make me a strong and sturdy set of armour. Ah, I see. An excellent choice, my king, says Master Farlin and calls forward the assistant cradling freeze in, uh, cradling free S in his arm. Okay, I have three examples of different quality levels here one must determine what one needs and how much one is willing to pay however they would all serve your highness well i do not need any thrills craft me something effective uh, i am sure whatever you make is good actually i changed my yep we'll go with the top one the most expensive and see what he will craft us hopefully something really impressive So the North and the Night's Watchers are winning at the moment. So I'm not sure what the Wildlings are up to, but they're not doing too well at the moment. That's a great Night's Watch armor. We're not going to get involved though, as I said. Not interested. We'll leave them to it. Okay, so looks like there's more people getting involved now. The Brackens are involved to defend against the Night's Watch. I don't even want to be in this war. Can we not drop out? I'm not interested in being in this war. I don't really care what the Savages do to each other. Wow, that is a great host of wildlings though 10,000 men be interesting to see what they do okay and they've actually attacked them so that could end badly okay king osric the mad is still going mad in the veil i don't know how he's still alive the guy's a complete psychopath he's also de yeah he's still declared incapable what a nutcase okay the wildlings just got absolutely smashed by that even though they had a massive advantage and a massive amount of numbers. How many men are there marching down? Not many. So it looks like they're going to get absolutely crushed. Oh no, they split the 9,000 off. Why did they do that? They should have... Oh well, whatever. Finally, the armor has been completed. Master Farlin has brought me a sturdy box which contains the items. My hands are shaking slightly as I open the heavy lid. This is excellent. Uh, add splint mail armor to the treasurer. Right, so let's have a look. If that's better quality than our fine set of armor, we'll wear that instead so uh morale damage plus 2.5 which one's better monthly prestige 0.15 monthly prestige pretty much the same personal combat skill plus 10 plus 10 so they're pretty much the same but i think we'll go with our new one as this is our uh our own one yeah we'll, we'll equip our new armor and we may give that fine set of armor to somebody else let's see uh your grace i'd like to express my concern at the fact alan Sazar. Alan de Salzard enjoys command of your armies and someone of higher status would clearly be more appropriate. He's doing a fine job, Will, but don't start your shit again. You did enough for that when fucking Anger was in charge. Right, so they're winning this war massively, but they are obviously going to suffer massively from the supply limit beyond the wall. It'd just be nice to see the wildlings actually succeed. Awesome. Queen Rennie is with child. Please be a son. Please be a son. Okay, you're still pregnant. When are you going to pop out your child, Eleanor Shycross? We didn't actually show you off in the last episode, did we? I forgot. This is the Valyrian bride of Sir Estian. She's proud, charitable, lustful, kind, pregnant. Uh, a dragon dreams, which is very interesting. That may pop up and do something in the future. A poet, attractive, and a competent steward. They're yet to have any children, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. She was pregnant when she came to Estian, but yeah, she's just, for whatever reason, not popped out that child just yet. 
Okay, we'll leave them doing their own thing beyond the wall for now. We need that war over though so that we can get our organise our coronation. There's not much else that we can do really while we wait. We just want to let the realm prosper, get that get more money, try and get all our lords on side. I'm not sure what their opinion of his is. We should probably look, so Okay, we've got two of a hundred percent opinion. Colmore Coleman of Sunderland and Davos of House Redguard. The rest don't have the greatest opinion of us. Which, oh, some of them don't have a very good opinion of us at all. Which is a little bit worrying. We need to improve that. Obviously with Engar, he had a much... The, he had, many of them had a much better opinion of him. So we want to try and get that better if we can. But we're not going to get involved in this war, as I said. We will bide our time. Hopefully it will weaken the north. A daughter was born to Prince Owen of Andalia and Eleanor Salzard named Tayella. Let's look for a better name. What are you like? Are you any good? Okay, you've just been born normal, so nothing special just yet. Let's look for a better name. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Um, No, Alice. That's very northern. Yes, Alice Seven Star. It's awesome that we're now in a Andal Northman. Have any of our brothers decided to change to Andal Northman? Yes, Prince Lionel is an Andal Northman, and so is Owen. Enger was obviously just an Andal. He would not swap to an Andal Northman. So was Harold Blackstar. Has Rogar changed to an Andal? No, still Andal through and through. He's refusing to change. What about... Yeah, Lord Albert hasn't changed. Lance, Sir Lancer was obviously a first man. Oh, he's had two daughters now. Still not had a son to carry on that name. This... Uh, the Black Sheep Hills are turning a little bit into like the Harren Hall of Andalia. Whoever takes over it seems to be cursed and like not carry on their family name. Maiden's Gate is looking good. Oh, he's got plenty of children. The Blue Star of House Seven Star will carry on for a long time by the looks of it. His sons had, his heirs had children. His other sons have had children. So yeah, the Blue Star of Seven Star will carry on for a long time by the looks of it. But we will end this episode here, guys. So thank you so much for watching. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully I'll see you very soon for our next video where we managed to sort out most of Ambrose's stuff, getting everything in motion ready for his rule so that we can finally properly set out his rule and decide what we want to do in the next episode. Try and expand a little bit more, make Andalia more prosperous and yeah add more lore and awesome history to this amazing world that we are creating thank you once again for watching and hopefully i'll see you very soon